Okie dokie. Uh, it's Dr. Wong here with that one. There I am. There I am. We'll, we'll get there. 2022, maybe I'll be technologically advanced. So uh, it's Dr. Wong with Seven's Q&A for dogs with seizures, dogs with paralysis, dogs with vestibular problems. Um, we've, we've got a, a spattering of questions today. So um, again, as always, I'm, I'm a little bit limited in, in what I can answer um, without having seen a pet. Um, so some of my answers, you know, may not be as specific as you'd like, but uh, we'll do our best to be as useful as possible to uh, anyone. Go ahead and put your comments in the, or your questions in the comments, and uh, we'll do our best to, to get to those. All righty. Um, hi there. You Good evening. Right? How are Good you? Good to see you again. So I, I'm, I'm reading here Buster's uh, acting painful again. Yeah, uh, probably about three weeks ago, Buster started showing signs again of um, seizing up and showing pain. Um, same thing with the walking. There's no sign of like drag, uh, leg dragging or anything like that. You could just tell Buster was in pain again. <clears throat> um, so, so I, you know, go ahead. No, go, keep going. So Buster's 12 years old and okay. you did the um, IBDD surgery on him February of last year. Yep. All right. And he had a great recovery. I mean, almost walked perfectly again, you know, um, only took about three months to get him back to where, you know, he was. And um, all of a sudden he started having the pain again. Buster's not allowed to jump off of the bed. He's not allowed to do stairs. Um, he hasn't done anything. I mean, we've babied him the entire time, but we do have three other dachshunds, a Jack Russell and, you know, a cat that thinks he's a dog. Um, so, you know, I was really disheartened when this started happening again and thinking it's over, um, took him back to the, our regular vet. Because, you know, I really was confused at Christmas time. Should I run him up to you guys? Is it going to be the same thing that we went through before, starting him on the tramadol, um, steroids, or do we get him up to you right away? I think that's the biggest thing is how quick do we bring him back to you guys? Skip over a regular vet. <laughs> Yeah, so um, I, I guess when whenever a dog has one disc problem, um, we, we try and set people up that there is a chance of recurrence. Um, so, so dogs with a slip disc, you know, there are multiple discs up and down the the neck, the mid back, mm -hmm. which is where most dogs slip their disc, and then their lower back. And kind of when we meet a, a pet for the first time, we kind of say, well, you know, based off of the current severity, we're recommending rested medications or we're recommending surgery. Obviously in Buster's case, we, we recommended surgery. His his signs or his symptoms were severe enough to recommend surgery. Right. Um, so whenever a dog has one slipped disc, they're at risk for some of those other discs, whether it's in the neck, whether it's right next door to where it was before, or whether it's lower in the back of having another problem in the future. Um, we usually quote around a 50% chance of having another problem in a dog that we don't do surgery on and okay. and about a 10 to 15% chance of it happening again in a dog that we do do surgery on. So, um, and specifically talking, you know, dachshunds and, and breeds that are, are predisposed to intervertebral disc disease. At surgery and at Buster surgery, we do a preventative procedure at kind of the, the adjacent disc sites. Um, so I don't remember exactly which uh, surgical site um, Buster was, but let's say it was like T13L1. Um, mm -hmm. We usually do the one or two disc sites in front of it and the one or two disc sites behind it. And that's where most disc problems happen. But um, we can't do the preventative procedure called fenestration the entire length of the dog. So we don't, you know, okay. um, do fenestration in the neck. We don't do fenestration in the lower back if the problems, the first problems in the mid back. So based on your description of, of saying uh, that, that your vet feels that, you know, it's it's kind of down by his tail this time um, or in his lower vertebra, um, that to me kind of suggests that maybe 
he does have a disc problem in, in his lower back. Um, so we did surgery here, but now down here by his tail is where the new problem is. There are other things that we think of when a dog has a recurrence of pain. And we take certain things into account. Um, you know, what kind of dog are they? What kind of breed? Are they predisposed to slip discs? Where was the first surgery? And how far out from the first surgery is the problem? You know, if, if, if you were calling me like three weeks later and, and saying, hey, he's painful again, oh, my thought process might be a little different. I'd be worried about has more disc material come out at the same site? Um, has there become an infection at the site? Um, has there become sort of, has there become some sort of instability at the surgical site? Those are the things that I think of kind of early on after surgery. But you know, a year later in a dachshund um, that you know got markedly better and then now uh, is having a, a relapse. The primary thing that I worry about is a new slipped disc lower in the back. Um, there are other things that it still could be. You know, he's twelve. Tumor needs to be on our worry list. You know, dogs get infections. Non-neurological reasons for back pain um, are, are, are all possible. But to, to answer your question, um, one, should he, uh, you know, sh sh should he come up here? And two, should you, you know, skip over your primary care veterinarian? Um, when it's something like this, where it's, where, where it's, um, I don't say just pain, but, but it's not more dramatic symptoms like dragging the legs. We really encourage you to go see your veterinarian first because one, it might not be a slip disc. It might not be a neurological problem. What we would hate is that you, you drive up here, we see him and we say, well, gosh, it's his knee. And then you have to drive home and then schedule something with a, a knee surgeon as an example. Okay. So, um, the, the other thing is sometimes when it's um, more mild like this, you know, we're going to say, Hey, let's try some rest and medications. And many times, you know, your your primary care veterinarian can do that for you, or call us, and you know, um, okay, we can help talk through. So, um, when would be the times to to come up here? One, hypothetically, if things got drastically worse, if if um, you know, either in the future, or if if the scenario was that Buster had stopped walking, you know, again, all of a sudden, mm -hmm. yeah, th those are things where most primary care veterinarians are going to say, yep, you need to go back up and, and, and see the neurologist again. Um, and it's much more obvious that it's a neurological problem. So those are the times where, you know, um, most veterinarians are, are, are happy that you called us first as opposed to called them and then, you know, delayed, delayed getting up here. Um, for, for, for Buster's case, um, to me, if it's not getting better, um, you know, we're trying the rest and medications that your veterinarian's prescribed and it's not getting better. Um, if it's getting worse or really if it's just something that's keeping me up at night and, you know, you talk with your vet and, you, and we make the plan of, Hey, let's just go see what the Southeast veterinary neurology has to say. Okay. Yeah, that would be our approach. So, um, so there's certainly nothing wrong. We're always happy to, to take a look. You know, we kind of just want to do right by you, right by Buster, right by your veterinarian and, you know, kind of make the, the right decision. Can I ask you one further question? Because, you know, I, I belong to a lot of different dachshunds groups, including Dachshund Rescue South Florida, which is a wonderful group. Um, a lot of people are telling me to put him in a back brace called the Little Back Bracer. And I bought the brace and I just feel like, I mean, to me, this has a thing going down thing of it i took it off because i thought to myself this thing looks just so uncomfortable and am i doing more harm by putting him in this brace than you know fair, 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 fair question um let's as, as long as we're, we're here you've brought up docks and rescue i figure i'll, I'll give them a huge shout out docks and rescue of south <laughs> florida is a, a rescue that we work with uh frequently they were kind of one of the the first relationships that that i made when i was down here and they're just an incredible rescue that basically all they ask is, how can I help? And, you know, they they just take care of dachshunds and um, they're branching off into um, kind of yeah. dachshunds. <laughs> kind of dachshunds. But just a fantastic group. And if you can support them, um, anyone else that's watching this, uh, it'd be incredibly appreciated because they're just super duper people. Um, so the, the, the back brace. Um, <clears throat> 
to, to, to my knowledge, there aren't any studies that, that suggest that it decreases the likelihood of a recurrence. Um, I know some neurologists actually get concerned that um, will it actually weaken the apaxial muscles or, or, or the, the muscles of the back that help support the back. I know some veterinarians that are concerned about that. The reality is the, the way that the disc is made and what happens in these dogs and in, in, in dachshunds, French bulldogs, you know, all these small breeds that are predisposed to slip discs, um, the discs have gone bad. So the, the normal inside part of the jelly donut that should be nice and cushiony has just undergone changes so that it loses its cushiony characteristics and it's just this dry, brittle material. And um, it's, it's, so a back brace isn't going to stop that process from happening. That that's that's in okay. Buster and every dachshund's genetics that that those discs are going to um, go bad and be uh, at risk for for slipping. Um, to to me, the other thing about um, intervertebral disc disease, most of the time when a dog slips a disc, um, I guess the 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 movement that I worry about the most isn't so much this which to me is what a, a brace that runs the length of the dog helps. It's more the, the, the squishing the, you know, I guess if you think of Slinky the dog from, um, from Toy mm -hmm. Story, not the stretching, but the, the compressing together. And that's just not something that to me, a, a brace that's going on this way um, would help. Okay. So um, do I think there's, you know, potentially some value in, in, in braces of, do they act as a, I, I guess, a reminder of, hey, my dog is um, is is at risk, um, and it's it's a visual reminder, sure. But um, I, I guess the most appropriate answer is, you know, to my knowledge, there aren't any studies that suggest, you know, that there's a benefit to it. Um, okay. if there are. I, I I'd be happy to be corrected, um, but just. It's definitely not going to change the dog's genetic makeup that makes up for you know the uh, the okay. risk, and it doesn't take away that compressive action. Um, okay. So very good. I really, really appreciate you taking the time out of your day. You got it. Um, I'll I'll be sure to 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 put in a um a, a call for us to reach out to you in a couple of weeks just to see how things okay. are going. Obviously, if something happens sooner, if you've got a question or whatnot, you know you know how to find us. Very good. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Right. Eric, good seeing you. Take care. All righty. Um, we've got a question here. Um, so my Labrador suffered an FCE 18 years ago. Uh, his left leg is very wobbly, but he does very well. If I get him some wheels, will his muscles start to waste? He's 10. So I, I, I'm, I'm going to assume that um, that was supposed to be an FCE 18 months ago or 1.8 years ago or, or something like that. If he's, if he's 10, I was going to say, if you've got an 18-year-old lab, whatever you're doing is perfect and keep doing it. Um, so uh, FCE, for those that are watching, um, is, is short for fibrocartilaginous embolism. Um, or a spinal cord stroke. That's when a small amount of um, material associated with the disc makes its way into the blood supply to the spinal cord and blocks off that blood supply. So that just like um, people are usually familiar with a stroke to the brain and people, it's a stroke to the spinal cord. Um, the, the hallmark of it is it usually affects, you know, large breed dogs. There are some smaller breed dogs like uh, like schnauzers that we see it in, but classically see it in larger breed dogs like Labradors. Usually they're active um, when it happens. Uh, they're, they're, they're chasing a Frisbee, they're chasing a the ball, they're running, something like that. It comes on suddenly. Many times they cry out in pain, so it can seem painful when it happens, um, but it usually doesn't get worse over time, and it usually affects one side of the body a lot more than the other. Um, so again, acute onset, non-painful, non-progressive and asymmetric spinal cord dysfunction is the, the hallmark of an FCE. We diagnose it by an MRI and um, 
and the treatment. So there's no medication, there's no surgery that's that's needed uh, for FCE. Usually it's just something that gets better with time and physical therapy. Um, depending on the severity and what part of the spinal cord is affected, that sort of uh, flavors the prognosis or, or changes the, the likelihood of making a, a recovery. Most dogs don't make a 100% recovery. So, so getting to, to, to Nicola's uh, question, um, most dogs don't make a 100% recovery and they do have some degree of deficits left over. Um, if he's walking, if he's using you know, his front legs and let's say his back right leg, but his left leg is, is still wobbly, usually for me, those aren't dogs that, that need a wheelchair. Um, is there physical therapy that could potentially um, help with that left side and uh, gain strength, et cetera? Um, you know, based on the information I have, as opposed to putting him in a wheelchair, I would actually put him into a physical therapy uh, program to try and uh, do the opposite of what your concern is of, of, of losing muscle um, mass, actually gaining muscle mass. Labradors do get a, a few other neurological conditions as they get older. Um, sometimes they get a polyneuropathy. Um, so, um, yep, oh, I, I see you there. Uh, so 18 months ago, and he's not going on, it has quite bad sores. So, um, if, if there's a, so I, I'd either go to your, your veterinarian or um, a, a rehab veterinarian in your in your area, if he's scuffing that left side and he's starting to get uh, sores on the top of his feet, the things that I would be doing, you know, one, I just wanna make sure that those sores aren't getting bad enough that, uh, you know, he's starting to lick his foot or chew his foot or that it's, it's causing damage to, to his foot. Um, sometimes a, a booty or a protective, um, protective booty is, is possible and can help at least when he's going outside on concrete on longer walks. Um, and, uh, you know, to, to me, it would be the, the, the rehab to see, is there any function that we can get back? Um, being that it's 18 months, um, we might not get as quote unquote, quote unquote, much bang for our buck as, you know, if we had started rehab immediately afterwards. But I would certainly encourage a consultation with your veterinarian and or a rehab veterinarian to see what else we can be doing. Um, sounds like we don't need a, a, a wheelchair at this point, um, but things like booties, things like um, orthotics can sometimes help. It, it all depends on how much he's buckling over in that leg, but those are all things that are in the, the rehab veterinarian's wheelhouse. All righty. Um, I hope that was useful for you. We've got Kenny here. Hello. Hey, Hi. Kenny, how are you? Hi, I'm very good. How are you? I'm all right. And Dr. Wong, Michael. Hi, so, no, nice, to, nice to meet you, Dr. Wong. Nice to meet you. So you have an 11-year-old Chihuahua named Nova. And yeah, yeah. Tell yeah, me yeah. what happened. Sorry? T t tell me about Nova. Tell me what happened. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, so, 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 I adopted, uh, I adopted her uh, about four years ago, okay. and, um, and 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 basically, she she had this this problem like called uh, B two B two for the heart. If I don't. And uh, can, can you stop, please? Uh, sorry, I'm I'm just my uh, my my. my my wife is here and she's disturbing me. Um, so, so, so anyways, um, so yeah, about, um, about six months ago, um, basically she, she just collapsed, uh, once. Um, and, uh, but, but and, then, and then we took her to the vet basically. And, uh, but, but she said, the vet said, uh, she's not sure whether it was seizure. Uh, but so, so then we just continue with the heart medicine that, that, uh, that she gave us. And, uh, and now after I think like um, must be beginning of this year or, or maybe December I can't can't quite remember but basically she collapsed twice in the same day and it was really concerning to me because because you know never never ha ha happened like that so, so the first time um, and and I, I I wrote this down um, the fir first time it was on her side and uh, and and uh, and it was about like twenty minutes or something like that. 
uh, and uh, and I think I think um, her 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 um, her arms were bent. I think and, uh, and 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 but but the main thing is she didn't move, and it was really really disconcerting because she just got up afterwards and and then and then and then pretended it was fine. Um, but then after like two hours, she collapsed again. And then this time, this time her neck and, and, the, and her, her head just went back, you know, mm -hmm. like that. And, uh, and it was just, sorry, it was just, yeah, it, it just didn't seem to be, um, to, 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 it was just out of, out, of, out of normal, you know, it just, it was really concerning because, because I've never seen that. And, um, and then, uh, but, 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 but this time, you know, her, her legs were, I, th I can't remember, I think it was her back. Legs that, that that were not stiff, maybe. Uh, um, but anyways, the, the 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 point is, she she collapsed twice, so we took, took her to the vet, and this time the vet said, um, said said that uh, um, this was a seizure now, and then we're like, okay, but but six months ago you said it wasn't a seizure, and so what the hell happened? You know, you can't just backtrack and said that. Well, now because you, you she's collapsed twice, so before it was a seizure, and then you didn't give her seizure medicines before. So well, okay, well, well, this this is really disconcerting now. You know, how, how can we trust you? So I went yeah. to we went to someone else, uh, and um, and and, uh, and and this she said she said here. Let, let me just see. She said um she said the the seizure was maybe because there was a uh, progressive inflammation or progressive tumor. Oh, I don't quite really understand what that means, but but sure. um, but uh, but but basically, what she said was it, it shouldn't be it shouldn't be um, it shouldn't be seizure. Um, so so my, my my question is, you know, is it possible that it's a seizure? And you know, it's it's just really concerning, you know, like of like course. like like this, and <laughs> it's just like, uh, well, my only thing is, that how can it just how can you just say? It was seizure. It wasn't seizure six months ago. And now you say it is, and then someone else says it. it's not. You know, I think I think um, I think I sent you some videos. Um, yeah, exactly, and, th and that's what I was looking at here. I don't know if you saw. I was kind of looking off the screen. I was I was, I was looking at the videos as you were describing it. Yeah. Uh, I, I, I guess a, a a couple of your your questions there, um, or you know, you know, one just how how concerning it is. I mean, I'm seeing the video, and kind of every time I see a dog have a a seizure. I mean, I, I think to myself, gosh, I see this every single day, but I can only imagine yeah. what it's like for someone like Kenny, you know, who's never seen it to have his his, his puppy do something like this. So I, I totally get it how scary it can be. Uh, um, just out of the blue, you know, like she, she just yeah. uh, she just coughed and then, you know, um, yeah, no, it, it, it's just like, I, I don't know what to do. You know? I don't know what to do. The, 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 the second thing that, that, that I'd say is, you know, sometimes um, you know, some dogs have classic seizures. What a classic seizure looks like um, is, is the dog goes stiff, it falls on its side, its legs paddle, it loses consciousness, it salivates, it, you know, might poop, it might pee. Um, and, and that's not what, you know, the, the video looks like here. Sometimes seizures aren't classic and can look different. So it can be very, very challenging you know, especially the first time it happens for, for your veterinarian to say, yes, is that a seizure or not? And um, the truth of the matter is, is even me looking at the video here, I can't be sure that it's a seizure or not. So um, I, I guess I'd uh, ask you to give your veterinarian a, a, a little bit of grace and, you know, it, 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 it can be tough. Yeah. Um, let me ask you a couple more questions. Um, so you, you said a couple of things that, that might steer our, our line of, of, of thought a little bit. Um, just, just one, you, you said that she coughed right before doing it. Did, does she cough yeah. frequently? She, 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 she coughed. Yeah. She, she's coughed quite frequently. And then, you know, she was coughing. Uh, um, and is that something new? Uh, um, yeah, I, I think, I think so. I think, uh, you know, she, she's quite old and maybe for, for like, maybe for this year, actually. Yeah. Maybe for this year, like, you know, like, like for and, years. And then you, you you had mentioned that that after the first veterinary visit, um, we 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 kept giving heart medications. Is she on heart medications, and does she have a heart condition? Yeah, yeah, yeah. As I said, it was just like some heart valve B two or something like that. I don't know what that means, but but uh, but that, that's why I know it's B B two. Okay. 
Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm not, I'm not 100 sure. I mean, we're, we're playing t telephone of what your your vet told you or, or wrote down what you interpreted and what you're you're, you're telling me. So, um, and, and and then so um, there are things that can look like seizures, and that's kind of as a veterinarian, as a neurologist, that's kind of the first thing that we're thinking of to go on the right you know, diagnostic pathway of, of yeah. is this episode a seizure or is it something else? And what else can look just like a seizure? Yeah. What a seizure is, is an abnormal burst of electrical activity coming from the brain. So it's a neurological cause for, for an episode. But there are other things that can look just like a seizure. So what's called syncope. Syncope is when the heart is not pumping enough oxygenated blood to the brain. So whether it's because of lung disease or airway disease or, or heart disease, we're not pumping enough oxygenated blood to the brain. And that can cause dogs to have episodes that can look just like seizures. Um, there are a couple things that, that at least raise a, a, you know, a possibility that that might be what we're dealing with with Nova. One, that we know that she has a heart condition to the description of the episode, you, you know, you, you, you kind of saying that um, they kind of come out of the blue, she coughs, she falls over. She, it's not a classic seizure where she's paddling or foaming at the mouth, you know, her head kind of stretches back. And then one of the other things that you said is like, she just kind of snaps right out of it. Um, many times with seizures, we, we can sort of tell that they're going to come on. The dog has a, um, a, a what we call a preictal phase. Um, so before the actual convulsing, you know, the dog acts like it knows it's going to have the seizure and might seek out the owner. And usually after the seizure itself, dogs are usually tired or, you know, confused. Sometimes they act blind. So um, when I hear that Nova kind of just pops out of it, um, gets up and goes on like nothing's wrong. So, um, so second possible cause of an episode is a heart or lung problem. And um, th 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 that's certainly a possibility. Yeah. Um, the other things that I think of when I hear of a dog collapsing, um, not necessarily now that I've seen the video, but dogs can collapse because they have balance problems, what we call vestibular disease. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think that's what's going on with her based off of the video. Um, yeah. Dogs can collapse because of spinal cord problems in, in their neck. Um, uh, that, that's in theory still possible. It just yeah. doesn't look like it based off of the video. Um, and then dogs, but but it, it won't happen in like, you know, it won't stop and then happen again in six months time, right? You know, like, you know, I, I, I just um, think about the second vet saying about this this progressive uh, um, tumor. Yeah. So, so let, 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 let's talk about that. So um, brain tumors and what was, was it stroke was the other thing that, um, or inflammation, in, inflammation. inflammation yeah, yeah. So those are things that we do see in, in chihuahuas. Um, Nova's a little older than, than our, our average uh, dog with, in, with encephalitis, but she would be in a typical age for a brain tumor. Um, usually, Th those cause brain problems and would cause seizures. Um, so to me, the first diagnostic step that, that we should be doing is trying to figure out what's going on in her heart. Has it progressed since when you um, last saw a doctor about, about her heart? Um, and many times a cardiologist can do an, an ultrasound of the heart and get a sense of one is the... Um, the, the, the heart disease severe enough to be causing these episodes. Um, and then the other reason that we like to get a cardiologist opinion prior to uh, getting a neurologist opinion is usually the tests that we do as neurologists to diagnose things like meningitis and inflammation and brain tumors and strokes. It's an MRI and that requires anesthesia. So before I ever anesthetize a dog you know, one that's their episode isn't a classic seizure, and two um, that that we have known heart disease. I, I just want to get a cardiologist opinion. So, um, so I guess to answer your your, your questions um, and and some that maybe you, you didn't specifically have. Um, I, I guess one I, I'd be I'd ask about her heart and could the heart be a cause of this? 
you know, whether that's your veterinarian, whether that's a veterinary cardiologist or some sort of combination of them working together. Um, to me, that would be step one. Um, if blood work hasn't been done, um, you know, things like low blood sugar can cause dogs to collapse and pass out and have episodes like this. So getting some blood work done would be very, very reasonable. Um, I, I, I can't really comment on, you know, the likelihood that it's a, a, a tumor or inflammation. Th that's where doing these tests would come in, meaning meeting with a, a cardiologist. Um, and if they don't feel that it's the heart causing this, potentially meeting with a neurologist. Um, <clears throat> so, so yeah, I, 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 the, then um, so 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 what would it you know would would it be, be a balance problem? I think you, you mentioned just now, and and uh, and I, I do I do actually notice that actually uh, because nowadays we, we try to go on some, some long walks because uh, it's good weather, um, but uh, but 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 she then gets a bit weak. Is that is that like a uh, a typical thing that that that, uh, that that I don't know you know. Yeah. My my question is, <laughs> how do I find out what what's 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 wrong with her? You, you know, because um, would you be able to find that out on, in a diagnosis that that just says okay, it's a seizure? You know, if I take a dog to yeah. to a and, and, and I I I don't want to cause more um you know m m more questions or more things for you to worry about. I I don't look at this video and think that it's a balance problem. So I, I guess I don't want you to okay. get focused on okay. that okay. And, and, and really worried. Um. So sometimes, again, if it's something like low blood sugar, if it's something like a heart problem, going on walks can actually, um, you know, use blood sugar or make the heart pump faster. So okay, okay. it could, could exacerbate those things. We're so um, where, where, where are you located? I'm, uh, I'm actually in the, in, in the UK. Okay. So yeah. there, there are definitely neurologists there. I know you guys are, you know... Um, lockdown and, and, and whatnot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, it's not a good time right now. But, uh, um, so uh, they're, they're definitely neurologists and, 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 and specialists there that, uh, you know, can, um, that have seen this a hundred times before that mm -hmm. should make it a lot easier for you and, and should be able to answer a lot of the questions that you have. Because I think you're asking the right questions. Um, I, I'm, I'm sure you understand it's hard for me to, to answer them yeah. just by looking at the video. My impression is, and from what you're saying and what from the video, I personally would start off, you know, going to my vet, blood work, um, x-rays, and talking about the, the, the heart first as could that be the problem? Could that be the cause of all of these episodes? Um, okay. Okay. Just, just, one, just one, one final question. I, I hope I'm not taking too much of your time. Not at all. And, uh, you know, just, just, I know, I know it's, it's, you know, it's impossible to judge from the videos, but but just just theoretically, theoretically, if, if it was the tumor that's causing this uh, the, the seizure, I, I, would I be expecting it to to keep happening from now on, or or, or would it uh, you know would it the, be the short answer is if there's a brain tumor, yes, this would continue to happen and get worse. Um, okay. I'll, I'll you know there, there's no way for me to know for sure. Um, but but I I, I kind of want to give you go ahead. Yeah, but it stopped for six months and then rehappened again. Like it's more the the break, you know that that six months gap. You know what what happened yeah. there. To to me that does not rule it does not rule a brain tumor out. So the the six month gap does not necessarily rule it out. Um, I wish I could tell you for sure. It's you know simply not possible. I I, I can't do that. My my, my, my gut feel is, you know, the, the, the problems here and not here, again, based off of the limited information that we have, regardless of whether it's in the brain or whether it's heart related. And, you know, I, I, I think we, because we know that Nova has a heart condition yeah. that should be looked at and reevaluated, um, you know, for two reasons. One, is it the cause of the episodes? And two, if it isn't the cause of the episodes, um, is she at least safe um, for for an anesthetic procedure with with the neurologist? Okay, okay.
Thank, thank you, Dr. Wong. I, I really appreciate it. You know, it's. Uh, I hope you understand. It, it, it's all completely. Uh, it's all. It's all completely. Just, just, no, uh, I, 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 I completely get it, and 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 I can see. You know, I, I can, I can see what you're going through. You know, what one. You're, you're, you're not a veterinarian. You're not supposed to know this. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you, you love her dearly, and you want her to yeah, um, no. to, to get better. And you know, um, obviously, with uh, with, with COVID, maybe, it's even harder. So maybe, maybe what, what I what I what I should do is, uh, you know, because because obviously, if you don't know whether it's a seizure or it's a heart disease, I probably should uh, should do I don't know an echo test or, or like a neurological exam, but just basically get some further. Evidence is that, is that what, what you would recommend me do and like you know consult some more experts or what else can I do? So I, 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 I would I would go to your veterinarian and and to, to be clear, n nothing that I hear you know makes me say gosh there was a problem with the first one you know mm -hmm. I, I, I know you you've moved from the first one to the second one but I don't hear anything that you know sounds awry from the first one at all so I, I, I would go back to your veterinarian. Um, I, I would ask, could the heart be, you know, part of the cause of, of this episode? Um, and what could we or should we be doing to better try and find out the underlying cause, whether it's meeting with um, a, a cardiologist mm -hmm. and the cardiologist would be better equipped by examining Nova to say what test is going to be appropriate. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah. so, you know, to me, where it would start would be having my veterinarian take another look, some blood work, and based off of that look, are we going towards a cardiologist, you know, or a neurologist? If we're going towards a cardiologist, you know, hear what they have to say, and they'd be able to say what the next um, next tests are. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So, uh, yeah. So, so the six months don't really. Like it, it, I shouldn't be too concerned about it. Basically, I wouldn't get I wouldn't get fixated on it. To me, yeah. the, the the fact that she's still doing it warrants further investigation. I see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course, of course. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Doctor Moore. Thank you so much. I uh, I really appreciate it. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, bringing me a bit of peace. But uh, yeah, like you said, I'll, I'll go uh, go and ask ask some more questions then. Okay. You got it. All right. Thank take you, care. Doctor Moore. Thank you. Take care. Take bye bye. Care. Bye bye. Hey Donna, are you here? I can I, I see your icon, but um, yes, I'm here. Can Perfect. you hear me? I, right. I can hear you, but I can't see. Oh, there you are. Oh yeah, sorry. I just uh, turned my video off because I wasn't sure where. I thought I would go off until what? Uh, yeah. What to do? The 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 audio went went funny there and um. So, so if the audio stays funny, actually, I, I probably will have you turn off the video. Sometimes people's bandwidth uh, gets a little, little funky. So, um, you have a three-year-old golden that has seizures and is on phenobarbital and potassium bromide. Um, what, what's going on with Dakota? Oh, well, she just started um, potassium bromide in October and has been very sedate. Um, I call her drunk. Like she's just, she walks into walls and has just no, seems to have no depth perception, like that she doesn't notice she'll fall off the edge of stairs. And so I'm thinking it's the potassium bromide that's just got her so sedate that she doesn't quite know. I, I actually have just had a conversation with my vet who spoke to my neurologist and they're, uh, they're going to back off a bit on the potassium bromide to see if it helps, but my concern, I guess, is that it's damage already been done by the seizures. That uh, so, so Dakota's three years old. How, how long has Dakota had seizures? She started her seizures about a year and a half ago. It was in okay. August, um, just before she turned two. And she's had them, I mean, it was sporadic at first, so we didn't start her on meds right away. Um, but probably about a month or a month and a half in, um, she had had enough that we started her on phenol okay. and then, uh, she kept having them and just 
Thanksgiving, around October. Thanksgiving was her last seizure. So she hasn't seized since she started testing bromide. Um, but I'm not sure which is the less of the evils there. Yeah. Um, and then the time, two weeks before Thanksgiving, she had eight in about a day and a half. And that's what I'm concerned did some damage to her. So I don't okay. know. We'll see. And, and so, so you said you, you've got a neurologist. Has, has Dakota had an MRI or anything like that? No. So, I, so I can't afford an MRI. So. so. So, so basically, I mean, the likelihood is Dakota has what's called idiopathic epilepsy. And um, right. I'll, I'll apologize if you've, you've heard this, this already. Yeah. Um, but a seizure is an abnormal burst of electrical activity in the front part of the brain. I, I generally think of three main things or three categories of causes of seizures. The first is something outside of the brain, like low blood sugar or liver problems or toxins or something like that. Um, and, and has your veterinarian done done? CBC chemistry panel bl blood work to look for. So, yes, we've so done we, all we, that. Um, so we've right looked ahead. at most of the causes outside right. of the brain. The second right. main cause of seizures is a physical problem inside of the brain, like a brain tumor or encephalitis or a stroke or a brain infection or something like that. Right. Um, and the third main cause, well, and we look for those with things like MRIs and spinal taps. Right. Um, the third main cause of seizures is idiopathic epilepsy. That just means recurrent seizures that aren't due to a physical problem in the brain or a blood work problem elsewhere in the body. Right. Um, it usually comes on between one and five years of age. So that fits with Dakota. Um, yeah. We have a normal exam. We're usually normal between episodes. So is Dakota completely normal between episodes? Um, Pre-medication. Pre-medication? Pre um, yes. Once she recovers from the seizure, then yeah, yeah. she was fine. Okay, that, yeah, that, that, seizure, that's what I mean. In, in, in between the actual seizures, right. she'd be happy, playful, not yeah. walking in circles. or. Um, yep. So... Yep. The, the, the likelihood is that Dakota has idiopathic epilepsy as the mm -hmm. cause of her seizures, but we can't be 100% certain without doing tests. But it's, you know, being that it's been going on for over a year, um, that, that would still be the kind of primary, primary right. working possibility or what we call differential. Right. Yeah. And about the only thing so, I haven't done, I believe, is the MRI. Like they've done like a thyroid panel, liver, yeah. like so, I mean, I guess I still have, I don't, I don't know, questions or things that I see because I live with her. Um, like she, she has infections often, like either an ear infection or a UTI or, so I just wonder if there's something that way going on with her that is causing, like they told me early on that if she gets an infection, it'll probably start, start or start a seizure. Um, Cause that was the one time she had a seizure and they checked and she had an ear infection. So okay. I don't know. I, I, I haven't done enough research to know if that's. Yeah, I, I guess a di direct cause. I, I, um, my, my understanding of what, what you're describing, like, like g getting a, an ear infection shouldn't directly cause a. No. A, a, okay. A fever. Um, okay. Then is it shaking of her head? Like my vet just checked her ears and she said they're perfectly clean, but she's constantly shaking her head. Like, would that be something with her seizures in her brain? Like, t t typically not. I mean, if she's alert and it's just kind of dog shaking ears um, or shaking head, I, I wouldn't think that that's like a, a partial seizure. I, I don't want you to worry about that. Okay. Um, so, so with regards to managing epilepsy, we manage it with medications with the goal of decreasing the frequency, the severity, and the duration of seizures. But we usually don't expect to stop all seizures and we do that with medication. So just like Dakota's on phenobarbital, you know, we'll usually start off with one and every neurologist kind of has their different preferred first drug that they go to, you know, for, for a three-year-old golden. Um, and in general, we try and maximize one medication before switching to a second. So, um, you know, we, we added in, or you added in the potassium bromide and it sounds like there's been a positive um, effect there with regards to seizure management or seizure control, but we're having a lot of side effects. Right. So phenobarbital and, and she was a pretty sorry? sedate dog. She was a pretty sedate dog before she started having seizures. Like she was very okay. laid back. That's what everybody would say. 
It's a very okay. laid back dog. So that's why I think with this medication, even though they say it's within the therapeutic range, because she was so calm prior that it's done more than what it did, would to an average hyper puppy. And and and, and, and you just kind of t- touched on one of the one of the main points to talk about. So um, phenobarbital and potassium bromide, you know, have side effects. Um, dogs drink more, they pee more, their appetite might increase. Um, sometimes they gain weight, and and most dogs will be sedate on the medications. Most dogs get better with the sedation, you know, after a couple of weeks. So if I have a pet that is, you know, showing um, severe adverse effects on phenobarbital or bromide or, you know, and any medication, um, and it's kind of going beyond the time that I would expect or it's more severe, one of the first things I do is just check, you know, is my dosage correct based off of, you know, body weight? Uh, and, and as you alluded to doing serum blood levels, so doing some blood work to make sure that the level is is where we want it to be. Um, and it sounds like your veterinarian and your neurologist have done that. So, um, so yeah, I, I guess to me, you know, the, the thought process where we're at right now would be one, do we start backing off the, excuse me, backing off the bromide, just like your, your veterinarian and your neurologist have, have recommended. And they're going to, you know, know much better just because they've been able to see her, lay hands on her and, um, you know, look at the results of the lab tests. So, um, right. Okay. So <laughs> does it matter when they do the lab tests? Like I've had different opinions on that as to when to get blood work done. For, for most dogs, no. Um, so there was a study, I want to say in, I don't know, two, 2000, something like that, where they looked at phenobarbital and timing of when the, the serum, uh, when, when the sample was taken after the last pill. Mm-hmm. And there was not a significant difference um, in, in those dogs. Um, potassium bromide, it has um, a really what we call uh, long half-life. So that's why you only have to give it one time per day. You know, instead of it doing this throughout the day, it kind of, you know, do, does this throughout the day. I'm sorry, my, my camera's over here. Yeah. Does, do, like, does this throughout the day. Um, yeah. So, so usually it doesn't matter for for the bromide um, of, of what the level is going to be. And for most dogs, I don't think it matters for the pheno- phenobarbital level. Um, there are some dogs that, you know, they just metabolize it faster or metabolize it a little bit different that I do think there's um, value in doing, uh, I guess, timing when the phenobarbital is, is, is given compared to when it is uh, tested. So a, a peak and trough level. And um, so, okay. so, um, so I guess, I, I guess it was a, a long time. way of saying 99% of the time, I, I don't, doesn't, um, matter. D- d- doesn't matter, but for certain dogs, I'll, I'll test um, post pill. So back to my, I, well, I don't know if it's my original question, the one I see there, but her, her, their depth perception, is that part of either the drugs or the seizures? Like, have you heard of that? Uh, t- t- tough to say. Um, t- in my experience, it's relatively, well, I guess to me, there would be, be three potential reasons for it. Um, two of which you've said, you know, is it the medications? And that's kind of what, what your, your doctors are, you know, trying to um, test for by decreasing the dosage and see, does that right. that help? Um, right. The the second thing, you know, is it just because of all of the seizures? Typically, unless the dogs had a ton of seizures, um, I I don't see long term effects of it. So if this is something, wh- when did you say she had the? I think you said eight seizures or something like that. Yeah, that was uh, beginning of October. So it's, so. It was- of, I, she started the potassium bromide about three weeks after that, so that's uh, so why I'm not sure if, if yeah. which is which is the one. So I mean, I'm kind of kicking myself now for letting her have so many seizures without doing something about it. But you always think that the last one is going to be the last one. 
it wasn't. Yeah, I mean, we, we, we kind of coach people on wh when to come into the hospital. And, you know, if it's a long seizure, we say, you know, anything longer than three minutes. If there are multiple seizures in one day, you know, if a dog has three seizures in one day, or if it's kind of one and you don't come out of it before going to the next, and you don't fully come out of it before going to the next, those are the times that we encourage people to, 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 to rush on in. Um, so I, I guess the third thing that we need to consider is, is um, could some of these symptoms of being goofy or you know, off balance or no depth perception actually be part of an underlying cause for the seizures? So you know, uh, it's not a, um, th th that I'm telling you, you need to do an MRI. It's, it's just, you know, another thing, another question to be answered um, that, that an MRI would. So um, mm -hmm. the, the nice thing is you've got a, you know, it sounds like you've got a, a, a good team behind you that is, is making, you know, good recommendations and they're going to be able to just do so much more in person than I'm able to, you know. Okay. Yeah. I, I more just wanted another opinion about the whole banging into things that uh, I, I haven't been really happy with the answers I've gotten. Well, they just say no, that that's not a thing. Yeah. So I, 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 I don't think it's, um, I don't think it's because of the long seizures. Hopefully no. it's because of the medications and yeah. you know, that that's the easiest thing to fix that we just adjust the medications. Hopefully, it's not a, a symptom of there being a an underlying cause for right. the seizures. No. We, we yeah. want this to be that, you know, despite it being a an appropriate, correct dose, um, just for Dakota, Dakota prefers the dose to be here, you know, as opposed to what the, yeah. the lab says 99% of, 95% of dogs should, you know, right. be good in and, that level. Yeah. And I guess my thing at this point is she hasn't had a seizure since Thanksgiving, so... Me, I mean, yeah. I, I'm happy with that, but I would also be happy with her having one and not be as doped up as she is. That, 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 that's the balance that every pet owner and every neurologist and every veterinarian treating seizures goes through. We're trying to balance, you know, the good effects of the medications, i.e., decreasing severity and duration of seizures and frequency of seizures, you know, versus the side effects. And sometimes it's really easy, and it, you know, it's 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 all here. But sometimes it's it's here, and it's a lot more. Uh, teetering back and forth so yeah and well, it's harder now with uh with our covid thing going on do we we can't even go into the vet with our dogs up here yeah i, can't, yeah. I didn't know if you knew that or not but so no we're, we're still doing curbside here as well are you yeah it's it's more difficult and i i was trying to put off doing anything you know much different till it was over but it's not over <laughs> so yeah. Anyway. Okay. Well, again, I think you've got a, a, a good team. Um, it sounds like you're getting good recommendations. Uh, um, I, I wish you guys luck. Thank you. I appreciate your time. You got it. Take care. Thanks. Yep. Bye-bye. All right. We've got time for, we'll try and do two questions here. Um, Martin says, I have an Epi Bassett called Rufi, 26 kilograms. I live in Ireland. There are no neurologists. Even my vets didn't have the knowledge to diagnose. It was left to me to research joint support groups. Before I go ahead. It involved getting information from the groups that going back to the vets and asking them to test for different things in order to work it out. Um, the rest of the you have the, yes. okay. Just grabbing. He was constantly in a state of jerk, muscle contraction. He has it mostly under control with phenobarbital, 50 milligrams twice a day. So that sounds like a two mg per kg dose. Um, potassium bromide, 1,000 milligrams once a day. So a 40 mg per kg and gabapentin, 600 milligrams. So a, uh, gonna need help there, um, 20, 25 mg per kg dose. Um, still episodes of really strong muscle contraction switches, especially to shoulders, limbs after food. 20 minutes to an hour. I know it hurts as he as he goes to bite the twitches. Um, my questions are, can this type of epilepsy worsen with age or diet? And what can I do to eliminate the episodes after dinner? I'm scared to experiment with his dosages without expert advice. Um, yeah, so I, I certainly wouldn't um, go changing the, the dosages. Um, 
So if, if I'm understanding, he's not having classic seizures where he uh, falls over, paddles, salivates, poops, pees. It's kind of more twitching around the neck. Um, I guess there are a couple different things. Um, so is, is it a uh, atypical seizure, as, as you've said here? Um, I, I guess I also um, wonder, is it a, you know, a muscle spasm? Sometimes dogs will get neck pain, um, especially bassets can get, you know, slip discs in their neck and that can cause neck pain. So um, it's, it's tough for me to answer your questions. I certainly can't answer the question of what to do with the medications. Um, you know, can this type of epilepsy worsen with age or, or diet? Um, I, I guess I'm not even sure at this point, you know, that it is uh, a, a, a an epileptic seizure. Um, and what can I do to eliminate the episodes after dinner? Um, so I, I would be interested, and I know I'm kind of going on a, a completely different direction here, but, um, you know, being that they're after dinner, uh, again, my thought process is, of, is it, you know, more more neck pain? I know you said that he's painful. Um, uh, try, try raising the bowl. Um, and, and I don't know if that would help be more comfortable if if actually putting the head down in the bowl is actually exacerbating something. So, um, but I, I don't have a great answer for you, for you there. Um, and I think there's one more that we didn't answer. Yeah, so um, um, I'm in Facebook vestibular group. My question is, will blood work indicate if a pet has an, an inner ear infection? Many believe their pets can't have an ear infection if their blood work looks good and doesn't show elevated white blood cells. Uh, great question. So um, will blood work indicate if a pet has an inner ear infection? And, and the short answer is, is typically not. So we, you can have a, a raging ear infection and have very normal blood work. Um, it's still worthwhile to do blood work for a dog um, with vestibular disease because um, there, there are certain conditions that uh, can lead to causes of vestibular disease, things like hypothyroidism. Um, you know, so the reason we do blood work uh, for a dog with um, vestibular disease is one, just a good general health screen. We want to make sure liver, kidneys, blood sugar, things like that um, are, are all fine. Um, two, as a pre-anesthetic, because really the main test that kind of gives us most of the pieces of the puzzle is an MRI plus or minus a spinal tap, and that requires anesthesia, and we always want to check uh, blood work prior to, to anesthesia. Um, can we have an ear infection and have normal blood work? Absolutely. Can we have an ear infection and have an elevated white blood cell count? Absolutely. Can we have an elevated white blood cell count and it not actually be an ear infection? Absolutely. So the um, point being, blood work is still important to do, um, but it's it's by itself isn't going to give us all of the answers and you know, shouldn't be used to make sweeping decisions on it's not an ear infection or it is, or it's not cancer or it is, or it's not. Um, I, I actually usually get this question around um, the talk of meningitis or encephalitis. You know, most people say, well, gosh, my dog doesn't have a fever and my dog doesn't have an elevated white blood cell count, so it can't be meningitis, right? Um, and, and that's not necessarily true. So we see dogs um, with meningitis or ear infection that have elevated white blood cell counts. We have dogs with encephalitis or ear infections that have normal white blood cell counts. And we have dogs with very abnormal um, white cell counts that don't have either of those conditions. So um, important to do, but by itself doesn't give us the, the, the whole answer. And... Um, Martin, I, I see your, uh, your your thing here. I'll, I'll have Emily reach out so you can give some clarification. We'll try and get you on on, on the next one. I'm I'm four minutes over where I'm supposed to be, and uh, Dr. Tluitt is knocking on the door for me to look at our, our next appointment. So um, 
we'll do our best to get to all of these questions and I'll have Emily reach out to anyone that uh, that we didn't get to their questions to see if we can get you on next time. Um, I believe we are doing this next Thursday and we'll have Dr. Chris Levine of Le Levine Veterinary Neurology over in Sarasota, Florida on with us. Um, so I'll see you next week. Thank you everyone, I appreciate it. <laughs>